Dan Johnson here at the Midwest LSA Expo 2011 and we are talking to David Dixon with the Pipistrel uh, this is the Virus SW now there's gonna have to be a little bit of history here for a second we have done video on the Pipistrel airplanes before and they've achieved some very great notoriety by winning not one but a couple of the NASA challenges for flight efficiency and in fact Right about this time, they're out in California again doing this with an electric airplane for the NASA Green Flight Challenge. So here's a company that does a lot of different things, but let's go through the list here a little bit and then I'll tell you why we're doing this. First of all, there's the uh, Pipistrel Cenus. It's spelled like sinus, but they pronounce it Cenus. That's a motor glider, big long wings, I think about 49 feet or some number like that. Then there's the uh, Virus, which is like this airplane, but a longer winged version of it sort of a almost a motor glider aircraft then there's the Virus SW which is this one SW meaning shorter wings or short wings and it's a little more accommodating to people that aren't used to a motor glider with its very long glide which some people find a little challenging to land because they don't want to come down that much but then you've also got the Taurus which is a, uh, a motor glider it's in a, which I would call it a self-launch glider a self-launch glider would be a better term and it's available with an electric engine or a gasoline engine and it's just a sleek and beautiful thing and that's what they used as part of their green flight challenge was actually two of those sort of mated together hard to do a picture of that without having it actually here but then the last one is the apis which is a pure glider that is no engine at all nope it's also a self launch ah glider. but that has a fold up engine yep just like okay. the cars right so the and engine can, pops out of the fuselage it can also be electric and that one can be electric as well so here's a company that's really paying a lot of attention to electric and coming down the road they've got another gorgeous looking design that's still in the developmental stage called the Panthera which is going to be a four seat aircraft that looks like it ought to go really fast powered by gasoline hybrid or electric yep. I believe do I have all that right that so order. it's a lot to cover here but what's really important here at the Midwest LSA Expo is that this airplane that we've looked at before or the other models that we've looked at did not have at that time special light sport aircraft approval and that's now done the Cenus, the Virus, and the Virus SW all have recent approvals as special light sport aircraft. Now you can get them ready to fly. And uh, you said they're going to be coming into the country where? Moriarty, New Mexico. Actually, they come into the country in Houston, get shipped to Moriarty where we have our man that puts them together and we'll get the FAA guy to sign them off and you've got an airplane to fly home. That's great. And this one was one of the models that was being Examined was it? This was a, this was one that tested the uh, the process of getting it done to see if the FAA really knew what they were doing or That's not. That's right. We, che <laughs> we checked. We tested them. And, and anyway, it took a long time to get every, to get all of our ducks in order and get everybody to mesh properly. But we got these airplanes licensed. Now they come through, and it's going to be quick. And you know, some people have asked about the quality of airplanes and stuff. Well, you can look at the airplane. You can see a lot of that for yourself, but. Um, if you go on there, uh, you can get through it to my website or a variety of ways, but look at the factory at Pipistrelle. It's quite an amazing piece of work. Clean as a whistle, very advanced equipment. You look at all of that stuff and you kind of go, I see how these people would make an advanced airplane like we're looking at here today. So the Virus SW that we're looking at here, I characterize it as being more applicable to Americans, many of whom have never flown gliders. And, don't really have experience with long, long gliding aircraft. How do how do American pilots like the Virus SW? Well, it's a very sweet flying airplane, and it can be licensed as a glider. But I think most people want it as an airplane, and they're going to fly it as an airplane. With a 17 to 1 glide ratio, it's not really a very great glider, but it's got to be good enough gliding characteristics that most of us will want to put the spoilers on the wing and you'll throw a picture of that later the, in order to land the aircraft properly because the 17 to 1 glide ratio will float quite a ways down a runway. Well let's put that in perspective for people that kind of go 17 to 1 okay kind of know what the numbers mean but what do they really mean? Well, a Cessna 172 has a 9.5 to 1 glide ratio so that's about half I think it's exactly half so that means Take the engine off a of 172, Cessna 172 at 1,000 feet. Take the engine off of this at a at 1,000 feet. This goes twice as far. Now, that's a good thing. That's safety. If yep. you do lose that's the safety. engine, which isn't likely to happen, but if you do lose it, you still got quite a bit of decision time in this airplane. Yep. And this is the one that doesn't glide so far. That's right. That's right. 
How is it for Americans in the the, uh, the fitting of the inside? Uh, you know, Americans, you're a pretty slim guy, but a lot of Americans enjoy their hamburgers, and uh, how do they fit inside this airplane? Well, most of them will fit all right, but not everybody will fit in these airplanes, <laughs> and that's actually true of all of the airplanes. There are some some Americans that are just too big to fly airplanes. Yeah, those, uh, those Slovenians <laughs> over there, they're kind of lean guys. but They, they so, really are. So but I need to clarify not, something. Not, not a problem. These, these airplanes, will, once you get in them, and, and I find it quite easy to get into. And I'm, I'm 71 years old, and I don't have any trouble getting in here, except that I bump my head. I don't usually do that. And I don't wear a hat when I want to lean back. We fit pretty well, and that didn't take very long. No, you know, high-wing airplanes are kind of easy, and you you use that technique where you just turned around, sat down, yep. pulled your legs in just, behind you. Just just back in. And uh, I've been in the airplane, uh, not in this particular one, not the Virus SW, but in the others, and uh, they're quite comfortable seating posture in them uh, because of the way the seats are designed. There's a lot of leg cushion right up here. Very nice airplanes, very comfortable, but very efficient. So if we want to get more information about this, uh, give us the website that we would send people to to go find more information about all things Pipistrel. Pipistrel-USA.com And uh, Pipistrel, you can see on uh, Dave's hat here, is uh, uh, spelled in uh, this way. And, 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 and the name kind of throws people a little bit. It has to do with, it's the Slovenian word for a bat. And there's a whole lot of history about that, but that's where that name comes from. And you can find more information about that on my website, too. I've got pilot reports and other information at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.